Well, this is really the um, follow-up to the PWM dash fan controller upgrade, uh, where I mentioned about uh, forgetting the resistors altogether and fitting a more modern control. Um, as you can see, I've now got the controller actually through the fascia. Uh, now, it's worth pointing out this fascia actually is four layers. Uh, you've got this outer plastic bezel. Behind that, you've got this, um, for the dial indicators, there's a very thin layer of plastic. Then there's a layer of clear plastic, which originally was used for lighting up these, and um, an LED sat at the end of the plastic, and the idea was it sort of lit the edge of it, and um, and hopefully the <laughs> light travelled all the way around, which wasn't particularly effective. Um, uh, but it but it did the job. Um, I haven't actually used that, but at some point um, I'm going to upgrade all that to LEDs anyway. Um, the other thing to note is it's important really to get this fan controller only operational when the ignition is live. So it's a case of looking down your fuse box and using a meter and finding out what is actually live when your ignition is in your first position. Um, now what I will say is and uh, I'll just get my keys put those in the ignition uh, at the moment my electric fuel pump is operational when the ignition is in the first position because uh, I had to take the relay out for another job so if you're wondering what the ticking noise is uh, when I turn the ignition on that's the fuel pump but now this fan controller is now live And I've got infinite control. I'll just turn that off. Um, now I did do quite a write-up on um, the AT90 forum, uh, which is for the T3 or the T25 or the Vanagon, uh, based in the UK. And it's in the electrical session, se uh, section about doing a fan upgrade. Um, and I went into quite some depth in terms of how to put this controller through, but because you've got four layers and the control knob itself, if I just pull the knob off, it's quite stubby um, and it will not go through four layers of plastic, I can tell you that. Now the original switch that would have been behind there and this metal dash, there's a square hole and fortunately that control fits nicely in there, in other words it clears it. Uh, but you actually only fasten it to the fascia. But as I say, you cannot get it through four layers. So what you have to do is cut a, a hole in the back and the layer next to that, which will be the clear plastic and the white layer at the back. You'll see, well, it's actually beige. It probably was white originally. <laughs> um, but you cut a square hole so that effectively this control knob is only having to go through this outer fascia and this very thin plastic dull, um, what would you call that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyway, these top two layers of plastic, otherwise you wouldn't get enough clearance to get the nut on on the outside. Uh, but we'll just, oh, I've probably got that in the wrong position now, but we'll put that back on. Um, so with the ignition off, it's completely dead. And the re I mean, there are, you could have it so it was on ignition on. Um, but you'd need to extend, on the original controller, there's um, there's an LED on the actual board, and you could extend that and bring the light out somewhere on the front here if you wanted to. Uh, but I opted to have this fan only operational when the ignition is in the first position, because, to be honest, there aren't that many times, really, when you need to be sat there parked with the fan on. Um, I suppose possibly in heavy traffic, maybe, but, you know, you could always open the window. <laughs> Uh, but but the point in doing that, by only having it in the ignition on position, um, which is at the point really when you're about to start the engine or the engine's running, um, then there's no, you, you know, any draw on the battery is at a minimum. At least it's only it's only drawing on the battery when the engine is running, and of course it's charging by then. So that's it really. That's um, that's the conclusion of this project. So ignition first position. Again, that's my fuel pump. If I can have any speed I like. 
and there are now no resistors. So hopefully um, that sort of gives you an idea of how to do the conversion, not too difficult. Um, and as long as you follow the wires that I uh, mentioned in the 8090 article, you shouldn't have a problem. Good luck.